Good morning and welcome back to Jody Lewis Creations. In today's video, we are gonna work on a journal cover. So this is going to be using the envelope. So remember I said get your envelope ready and uh, get it cut to the size that you want. So mine is cut to, I believe I did it nine by 12. Let's see, did I? I did and I did. Okay, so I wanted to make sure it seems like it's been a while. Sorry, I'm shaking the table. Of course I am, I needed to get in the drawer. Okay, so I have my envelope, so I'm setting that aside. I'm still not ready for that. What I have done, and it's completely up to you. You can just use fabric, you can use whatever you want. You're going to end up just gluing and covering, but we'll get to that. So, I have here some tissue paper, and I love this with all these advertisements on it. It's very vintage feeling. And so anyway, I don't know, we're gonna make a cover with it that I'll use at some point. So I have already done it. Look, the magic of TV, right? I took this painter's paper, just on a roll. Um, I used this in the fairy journal. I don't know if you watch the fairy journal. It's kind of thin. Oops, sorry, that's probably really loud. And I had that tub of uh, the Matte Mod Podge. Remember I kept saying, oh my gosh, I need to use this. It's starting to get icky. Well, I used it. It's gone. I threw the rest away. I mean, it was only a little in the bottom. Um, I have talked about using surfaces that release. So what I mean by that, I don't think I explained it very well in the design team video when I was creating um, those covers. What I mean by release is a a surface that the glue is not really going to stick to. So this is a good example. Hopefully you can see this. When I glued this, oh my goodness, get a hold of it here. When I glued it, see my glue went over the edge here, but when I pulled this up, it released. I haven't done the other one yet because I wanted to show you. So you just have to get it started. And you just kind of gently, I mean, you don't just rip and tear, but gently pull on it and see it's pulling right off of that freezer paper. Now, parchment paper would work as well, um, but I like the freezer paper because this is like almost like a waxy surface. And I have freezer paper for sewing projects and stuff, but I have found that it works really well for this. I mean, like, look at that. Isn't that fun? I mean, I'll probably sit and play with that. <laughs> so... Because I used the Mod Podge, it almost has like a shiny, plasticky feel to it, plasticky appearance. I don't want that. I'm going to take these outside with my sanding block and just gently knock the top off of this. And I'm going to get them cleaned up and then come back and talk about what I'm gonna do with them. Okay, I'm outside, so hopefully the road noise, road noise won't be too loud. This one I have sanded. So you can kind of see it still has the shine, but not as much as like this one. So hopefully you can see that difference. Okay, I'm gonna keep working. And uh, when I come back, I'll be back upstairs and inside. Okay, back upstairs. <clears throat> Forgive me if I sniffle. My sinuses are really bothering me today. There's um, pollen alerts for <clears throat> grass and I love to be outside, but grass is not my friend. <laughs> so I'm back inside. You can kind of see the difference. I'm, I'm hoping better now. And hopefully that last segment wasn't too loud with all of the road noise. I mean, I'm going to leave it in there so you guys can <clears throat> see the difference from the sanded bit to the non-sanded bit. Um, <clears throat> I'm just gently inking. I'm not getting a lot of ink on my dauber. And I'm just, you know, you can see I'm just kind of lightly going over this. And what that's doing is that's picking up that texture. I know, hopefully there, can you see that? Picking up the texture from, you know, where I didn't necessarily get the tissue paper flat when I glued it, where I sanded those, you know, sanded that off. <clears throat> so I'm going to do this to both of them and then get them cut down to the size that I want. And I've been thinking about how I wanna do this cover, and I think I want some lace or doily or something kind of dripping out. You know, if the cover's folded like this, I want something fun <clears throat> on the side here. Now, um, 
I guess I can talk while I'm doing this. You don't have to use, you know, a tissue paper like this. You you don't have to. I mean, options are if you wanted to, you could, of course, decoupage tissue paper, napkins. Um, <clears throat> you can use fabric. You can totally do fabric. You can even, you know, Mod Podge your fabric if you wanted to get kind of this effect. Um, but... Honestly, I just was trying to do something a little bit different. I mean, I, I realize I work with napkins and stuff a lot. I just really enjoy working with them. I like the design. I like how they turn out when I do decoupage with them or whatever. I thought I would try this with tissue paper. You can also make your own material. You can take your stamps and, you know, you can stamp on any color tissue paper that you want. If, you know, just regular gift wrapping tissue paper and make sure you use archival ink so your ink doesn't move when you go to glue it down. So you can randomly stamp all over your tissue paper or your napkin, your white napkin base, okay? And then you can use that for your collage material or your decoupage material, excuse me, as well. And that would give you a really fun, so if you don't have, you know, something like this and you're like, oh, I kind of like my cute rabbit stamp or my, my, you know, Tim Holtz steampunk stamps or whatever stamps that you have. Or if you just want to mix a bunch of stamps, you can do that as well. So that was kind of a rambling bit about all the different things you can use, but I want you to really think about, you know, what you have in your stash, what you might want to play with, you know, what, what kind of makes your heart happy if you want to do something like this. Um, honestly, I, I haven't done, I mean, I've stamped onto like napkin bases and stuff like that so that I can collage with them, but I have not done an entire cover like that. And I think that might be kind of fun. So maybe that's something to consider as well. Okay, enough about that. I'm going to get these cut down to size, find a doily, and then I will come back and see what uh, we've come up with. Okay, so something that I did not take into account when I chose my tissue paper height. What, well, that's not true. The, the painter's paper is, that is the length of the, the height of the painter's paper. So that's not any, so that's what determined the base of my tissue paper. And I thought, oh, that's perfect because it's nine inches tall but I don't want that white envelope to show. So even though I'm going to sew around this, I don't want that white envelope to show. So I have here some coffee dyed muslin and I've just torn that in strips. So what I'm going to do is just go around all four edges, well, all eight, because I'm going to do both sides. And that way, when I get my cover sewn on, then this rough edge of this fabric is going to be what's showing and I think it's going to be really cool. And you know, if I don't end up liking it, what do I always say? It's just like paper, right? And since this is a recycled envelope, I'm not really using anything that I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to use that because for whatever reason, you know, hopefully that made sense. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to try to use my Fabri-Tac and I'm not going to, I just need to really use enough to hold it in place because I am going to end up sewing around this with, um, because I have dark brown thread in my machine already. I think that's going to be really pretty, um, going around this and just really tie into the vintage feel of this. So, um, let me get this kind of glued around and then I'll, I'll come back and show you kind of what I think, well, I can show you what I think it's going to look like now, can't I? I can just hold it, right? Okay, so I think it'll just kind of poke out, you know, about like that, and just kind of make kind of just a, a rough kind of edge around that, and I'll get it more precise. I don't really want to iron this, but I think I may have to so I can get it to cooperate, um, but anyway. Oh, you know what? I could actually just glue it to the back of this. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, so I have the muslin um, glued all around the edges and I have the back glued on. So what you want to make sure that you're doing if you're gluing to your mailer is make sure you're centered. Um, you don't wanna be off or whatever. I use my three in one. I didn't go all the way to the edges because I know I'm going to sew this. 
One thing that you can do, if you want a little more firmness to your cover, you can go ahead and slide like some uh, cardstock bits in there, chipboard bits, whatever you want. I personally want a squishy cover. Um, that's gonna be my inside, so I'm folding that the wrong way, it doesn't matter. At this point, it doesn't matter. So. I like the way that muslin looks peeking out around there. So when I stitch this together, now it will squish that mailer in there and then that muslin bit will be what you see poking out. I was playing with different trims to have the different trims kind of hanging out the side. The problem is, is that I don't know how I'm going to use this or any of that stuff. So I'm opting to not do that, even though I do kind of like that. I do kind of like it. but. I don't want to do that because whatever I use for a topper, I can have something dripping out from under the topper. Hopefully that makes sense. Not going to do a topper in this video. Um, again, I'm not really exactly sure what I'm, well, I kind I think I know what I'm going to do with this, but that's for another video. So again, I'm just putting some, this is just my three in one. You know, you can use whatever glue you have. It should not glue stick. <laughs> Don't use glue stick. That won't hold. Um, if you're going to sew around it, then yes, you could because you're just going to put something on there to hold it until you get it stitched. But if you're not going to stitch it, then make sure you're using a good glue that's definitely going to hold. Um, so if you have questions about that, absolutely let me know. And um, see, I'm a little a little not far enough this way on it but I hope when I stitch that it'll be okay but if it's not okay then those are opportunities to learn how to fix things right so there is that I'm going to let this dry I won't sew through wet glue on my sewing machine and um, so I'll let that dry once it's dry I'll go ahead and stitch around that I do not film stitching, it's just I'm not set up for that, so if you have questions, let me know. And then when I come back, it should, basically, the base of the journal is finished at this point. So I'm going to stitch around it. You could hand stitch this, that would be kind of really cool and rustic looking. Um, there are so many options, you know, you could almost give it a quilted effect if you want to. Um, which I did consider doing that before I glued the, the back piece on. I considered kind of quilting the front of it, but I don't think that I want to do that. Again, I'm, I kind of know what I'm going to do with this, but I kind of don't know what I'm doing with this yet. So <laughs> I know that's like clear as mud. I'm sorry. Okay, so when we come back, it'll be stitched and then that'll be it. So this is gonna be a relatively short video, but this is just one thing that you can do with a bubble mailer to make a soft cover journal cover. Um, so hopefully you'll try it and let me know how it works for you. Okay guys, so <clears throat> it's done and I love it. So I stitched around the edges there. Hopefully you can see that. The lighting is kind of crazy this morning. See, I stitched around. Okay, so remember I said um, make sure it's lined up, <laughs> that you're centered. Well, guess what? I wasn't, but that's okay because <clears throat> I just stitched it a little more wonky than I would have otherwise done. I stitched, you know, around once this side and I flipped it and I was like, oh, well, I got off, you know, like up here, I got off a little bit and I was like, okay, well, I'll just flip it over and stitch around again. So I did. And then I was like, for the fun of it, I'm just going to stitch around a third time. So at that time I kind of went crazy on purpose, but I love this. Now I do have to tell you, I had a purpose for this. I just wasn't going to disclose what that purpose was because I can't. Um, any well, I can now because it's not going to work. <laughs> this was going to be that Christmas journal swap I have to make. Um, and I was going to use this for the cover. However, the spine is just not going to be anywhere near big enough for what I need to do. So back to the drawing board for that cover. And, um, I think what I'm going to do with this is actually build this into a small journal. So I think I will put some pages in here and see what we have maybe in the scrap bin or, you know, like that would be a cool piece in there. So 
I don't know where I'm gonna go with this. I truly was going to use this for the cover for my Christmas journal swap, but nope, because this is only gonna be big enough for a small signature, and let's face it, we all know I don't make anything small, so <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll have to figure that out. But anyway, so I guess probably what's going to happen is this is going to evolve into a clean up my desk or clean up my table using my scraps so that I can get ready for our trips and not have my table as a mess. So, I mean, like we have that piece we can use from the fairy journal. Just some scraps here, some packaging, um, you know, so we could make this a really kind of eclectic bit and uh, see what we can come up with. So I think my next proje project just presented itself to me. This is a digital I made. I was playing with a ledger page and some graphics, so maybe we'll figure out how to use that somehow. Um, we have these painted bits that I never used for anything. So we have lots of things just on my table that we can play with. So tell me what you think about that idea. And I will see you guys in the next video. So thanks for watching. I hope that uh, you're going to use your packaging and see what you have to play with and see what you can come up with. I'm thinking a cardboard base for a topper on this. Like how cool would something like that be? Yep, we're going to do something like that. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.